Brave Maker Show is hosted by Tony Gaffestone and Christina Jackson. Thanks for tuning in. It's showtime. Yeah, hey, hey, hey. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Tony Gaffestone. My pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm the founder and executive director of Brave Maker. Really glad that you're here today. I'm a Caucasian man with brown hair and some uh, scruffy beard. And I'm in my studio with a big black background that says Brave Maker. And I'm wearing a cozy, warm October hoodie. It's a sweater slash hoodie with a hood. I'm loving it. Uh, I am always joined with my friend, my partner and collaborator in all things Brave Maker, Christina Jackson. That's so awesome. Thank you, Tony. You look so cozy. Uh, it's getting cold around here, out here in the Northern California. I'm coming to you from Dublin, California. I'm about 20, 30 minutes east of San Francisco. And my pronouns are he, she, they. And I'm an African-American woman sitting in my uh, Dublin studio. And I got the Wakanda a shirt on today with a gold star chain. I'm sitting in my power chair by Will, the Model C. And I'm super excited uh, for today's guest, Tony. This is great. Yes. Now, we always start our show with a question. Before I say that, we are trying to be inclusive. Reason why, if this is new to you, we share our pronouns, we share some of our visual attributes so that we can be able to be accessible by all. So before we bring in our special guest, we always ask our question uh, of, the, of the week is, what are you doing to advance your creative goals how are you braving your way so christina how are you braving your way toward your goals it takes one step at a time what is it this week mm -hmm. i'm braving my way by writing for my website so we're going to republish the website at the end of the month i shared a little sneak peek with tony he's actually the only one who's seen it other than uh, my website builder and it's super exciting if you're a creative if you're an actor out here in the bay area and you've been neglecting updating your website it is such a beautiful thing to do because it helps you refocus all your goals, what you're doing as you go along the tabs for music and acting and writing. What are you doing in those areas? And you want to bring the best of what you have to show on your website. So I'm getting to do that, a lot of editing. And it's great. So that's how I've been braving my way. It's a lot of work, but it's going to be great when it's all done. And Tony, how have you been braving your way this week? You're inspiring me for a website redo, but my website yeah. is TonyGaff.com where I talk about all things filmmaking. So as a writer, director, just had finished my feature film. So we're still in post uh, finalizing, you know, special effects, sound and music, but I'm already working on my second feature. So we shared last week and the week before the second feature is adjacent to this feature. And it's based on the character Christina played in Last Chance Charlene, which is my first. And I'm titling it's a working title go veronica go but last night i met with cody smart who is one of our brave maker partners and she is a um, film professor in at ucla she's also a film and script doctor and does really great work with a her company called next level screenwriting but last night i was just pitching her all of the story beats so we worked through all of my outline from beginning to end and talked about the themes of the film and so uh, braving my way this week just meant looking for feedback and i highly recommend having someone who's a professional who you can share what do you think what, do, what am i missing what are you hearing how is the story sounding and she was able to pick some things out that i thought oh that's so good so before i even go to writing anymore it's i really want to get all of these beats uh, figured out for this next feature film so felt really good to do it and if you're interested in writing scripts our next screenwriting workshop won't be till february 2022 but you can find out more information at our website at bravemaker.com thanks for asking christina yeah right, i love let's, cody let's you know do that this. I, I love cody yeah, yeah you do love her because you just met with her I last week her. too right yeah on. she helped me polish up issue one of my first comic book so great. yeah uh, cody's smart that's the way to go She's not paying us to advertise her for this. So She's we pay not. her because we love her so much. <laughs> <We pay> her. <laughs> As All we right, should. Well, you have to pay artists, right? For their right. skills and talent. It's a wonderful that's right. talent that she has. And yeah, it's an honor to be able to work with her. But yes, let's jump into today's guest. This is great. Hey, you want to pitch, you want to sell a TV show, you got an idea, you need to know writer and uh, the producer or the creator, the, the idea behind Writer's Writer 5050, uh, as well as the one who just produced or just wrote a new 
ebook who that I just bought, like literally I just got it in my inbox today. I haven't even got a chance to read it yet, but learning how to pitch like a badass, uh, pitch TV shows like a badass, Yvette Vargas. Oh, you're welcome, Yvette. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you so much for having me. Loving the energy, by the way, uh, loving the energy. So Yvette Vargas, I am uh, just uh, speaking, attending here today from uh, Los Angeles. Yes. My uh, my pronouns are uh, she, her, hers, um, and uh, just thrilled, thrilled, thrilled to be here. And yes, absolutely, I am a badass pitcher. Um, <laughs> and I wrote the wrote, wrote wrote this wrote this book, the badass television series pitch structure, a guide to success. Um, and it has uh, it basically has my secrets about how to format. A pitch because Ooh. yes 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 because what most people don't know unless they've been pitching or they're or they're working in the industry um is that you actually have to write the script of your pitch <laughs> you write the whole thing out and then uh then you know then then you'll fine tune that you'll practice that you'll memorize that but then when you actually go to pitch which is basically the verbal presentation of your of your project you are you are presenting that verbally even though you wrote it out and you have this script but you're memorizing that you're internalizing that and you are presenting it in a verbal manner um with passion and you need to know your show inside out but that verbal presentation has a structure mm. so this book is all about that structure i love it tony and i are writers and filmmakers and aspiring to be badass pitchers ourselves so we can't wait to dive into the book but before we do Yvette we would love to know your origin story uh, I'm a huge comic book fan I'm writing my first comic book and origin stories have become some of my favorites to hear so we'd love to know where were you born and raised and how did your upbringing uniquely prepare you for the work you're doing today Thank you. Thank you so much for that uh, question. Um, yeah, it's, it's, and it's definitely, you know, a, a unique origin story, I would say. Um, and by the way, I write comic books as well. Um, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll get to that. <laughs> we will exciting. get to that. <laughs> yes, very, very exciting. So I was born in the Bronx, uh, the Boogie Down Bronx in New York with my uh, Puerto Rican American family. I'm actually technically first generation um, Latinx, Latina. My parents, um, they, uh, well, my grandparents actually immigrate, immigrated from Puerto Rico to New York in the 50s. And uh, my parents were two and four years old at the time. So my parents, you know, they're very Americanized, but they're also very Puerto Rican. Um, but technically, I'm a first generation, first generation Latina. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I grew up with three brothers, the lover, the fighter, the jock. I was the artist in between. I always, I, I was, you know, definitely art was my thing, drawing, painting, and writing. I've always done that. I was always a visual storyteller, and uh, and uh, a, a very, a very big shift, you know, that that occurred that informed um, who I am today, and also my uh, my storytelling was that my family moved from the Bronx to a New Jersey suburb, and we were the only Latinx family in the entire county. I'm not even joking. Uh, and it was that way until I graduated high school, actually. And uh, so here I am, plucked from the hood, dropped into white suburbia. And uh, and then once I uh, once I lost my hood accent, then I wasn't like quite Latina enough for Latinos. Um, and uh, but I was never quite white enough for my white friends. So I was somewhere in between and uh, just finding my way and really and, and and just really trying to understand my identity and who I was because I actually didn't know I was a person of color until I was plucked from the hood and dropped into the into white suburbia so that was you know a whole <laughs> that was that that, that 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 was the whole thing um but uh but I in, but I was as I mentioned I grew up drawing painting and writing and also technology I loved technology I had these three brothers. Their toys were much cooler than mine, um, so I really like you know delved into the into the games and the gadgets as well. Um, and uh, and music was also another really big influence for me as well as as well as dancing. Um, and uh, you know I used to I used to do like local DJing, and uh, you know definitely you know was did the whole club thing and and was you know was like a a club kid. Um, but uh, and then with my you know drawing that even brought me to graffiti, but uh, 
but storytelling and visual storytelling, I mean, that was really where my, where my passion lied. And then going back to, you know, the identity question of it all and, and having a layered identity, um, uh, you know, the, the intersection, the intersectionality of, of, of identity. Um, I really, I really came to understand in my teens that everything that made me different actually was my superpower. And uh, so then I really leaned into my, uh, you know, my culture, my ethnicity, and uh, just, you know, never, never, never looked back since. And uh, so then I ended up, uh, after I graduated high school, I ended up, um, I went to FIT, the Fashion Institute of Technology in New York, where I studied fashion design and graphic design. And uh, then I ended up working as a fashion designer um, in New York in the garment district for about two and a half years. I was a designer for Donna Karen and Calvin Klein and a whole host of others. And then I was freelancing. Wow. Yeah. Yep. And then I was freelancing at different uh, ad agencies doing you know, graphic design. Um, but after two and a half years of working in the fashion industry, I, uh, I love the work, but I hated the people. I have to tell <laughs> you, <laughs> it was extremely challenging. Uh -huh. And I just knew that I, I, I just could not see myself for the rest of my career working in, uh, you know, in the fashion industry. So then I really leaned into my storytelling. Um, I mentioned, you know, I, uh, I used to DJ and just music was a really big part of my upbringing. And then I started directing music videos. So I, I, I really wanted to lean into the, the, the filmmaking. And I ended up getting into NYU Tisch uh, School of the Arts on scholarship. So I, uh, I really flourished there. And my senior thesis film ended up winning the best of NYU. It got me a lot of buzz. And that's what got me out to LA. And, uh, and then once I landed here, um, because I had, uh, of course, now the traditional storytelling skills, as well as these digital storytelling skills, because with my graphic design, that, that led me into interactive design and video games um, and so much more. And I was always about really combining the two, these traditional storytelling skills with digital at that time. So it was really ahead of the, uh, of, of the game. Um, so once I got to LA, I started working at the digital departments at the studios, Universal, Disney, Sony, and then I have the, you know, the New York hustle. I worked 25 seven. So I was also freelancing all over town, but one of the many gifts that, uh, I learned from working at these digital departments was how to adapt intellectual property, because basically that's what I was doing, um, between whether it was a film or a television series, whatever was going on at the studio that they wanted to promote. Um, because at the time, digital was used more um, as promotional vehicles for traditional formats. And uh, so I was creating all of this digital, uh, all of these digital experiences or, or narrative um, story extensions of films, television series, comic books, video games, music, uh, you know, music properties, musical artists, theme park attractions. I mean, you, you pretty much name it, whatever was going on at the studio. And I got really, really good at that. Um, and then I became known as this multi-platform storyteller because not only could I adapt a piece of I, I, I intellectual property IP into a different medium platform and make it its own thing, I was able to also uh, expand and tell a story across different mediums and platforms. So I got really good at that. And uh, I was revered as this multi-platform storyteller. Um, and there's just, a, there's, and it's still, there's just a very short list of people that really know how to do that. So I built up a, you know, a whole list of clientele. And uh, then I ended up actually starting my own company with my boyfriend at the time, who's now my husband. And we started a, a digital media production company called Digital Rain. We have this, that company till this day. And then the studios and production companies and music labels, uh, video game companies, comic book companies, then they became the clients of our production company. So again, continue to, to, to really create all of these different kinds of digital and interactive experiences for intellectual properties and artists. Uh, really, you know, really, really big names, uh, you know, m m you know, Madonna, um, you know, she was a client of ours for three years, mm -hmm. um, uh, Wu-Tang Clan, uh, and just so, and, and, and so, so many others. So we just worked on a lot of really big IP and we built up the, you know, the, the, the company did really, really well. But then what happened, this was around 2008, 
was that I was just so involved in building the company and doing the client work that I no longer had time to tell my own stories. So, um, you know, and I, and I definitely was not fulfilled by, you know, by, by that. And something was certainly missing, uh, cause I've always just been this, this, this creator, um, and, and, and taking an idea and, and, and just producing a tangible, tangible piece of art. So, um, I was really missing that and, uh, television had reached a whole other level of what was possible in terms of telling, telling, uh, stories in, in, in TV. So I really wanted to actually lean into television, long, you know, long form storytelling. So I decided to go back to school and I ended up going to UCLA in their MFA program um, because their screenwriting major offered a two year concentration in television called the showrunner track. So I got into that and uh, and just really developed a lot of material because I've just always been that creator. And, um, you know, and it was, and I just learned a tremendous amount the first year that was focused on the half hour, you know, half hour television and the, the second year was one hour. Um, and then before I graduated, which was in 2012, my undergrad NYU Tisch, they have a thriving alumni here in LA and they offer programs and events and all kinds of things. So, uh, at the time they, they had offered a, uh, a digital series lab, the way that Sundance has their digital labs. So this was a uh, there was like a three to four month commitment where you had to produce uh, three episodes of a web series. So very long story short, I ended up winning that because it was a competition. I ended up winning that competition, and the judges were NBC Universal Television executives who really loved my web series, and it was this sci-fi action thriller starring Henry Rollins. So I um, I got a production grant uh, from uh, the judges uh, from you know from 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 that contest um and uh so i kept making episodes and then the series ended up premiering at sundance in 2014 and there were direct tv executives there who really loved the show so then the the series ended up premiering on direct tv and it did really really well there and because it was this digital play that ended up going to television linear television uh the series ended up being nominated for two emmys in the interactive category but uh but i but i lost the game of thrones and I can live with that. <laughs> um, but uh, but it just opened a variety of different storytelling opportunities for me. And uh, so, you know, so today I mostly work in the scripted television space as a creator, a developer, which basically means that I create television series, I package them, I pitch them, and every once in a while I sell one. So uh, so to date I've sold seven pitches. Um, and uh, and hopefully this last one, though, the the, the, the most recent one, uh, which I uh, set up at uh, E1 Entertainment One. Hopefully, this is the one that gets the series pickup because there's so many different there's so many different stages of the sale, mm -hmm. right? It's you know the initial sale is like okay, great, we love that series that you just pitched, so we're going to invest in you in the series to either write the pilot or you know write the show bible, just you know development work. Usually, it's a pilot. Um, depending on the buyer, every buyer is different. And then, uh, so that's the first, the first yes, but the ultimate yes is getting the series pickup. So, uh, you know, so, so hopefully this n lucky number seven is the one that, you know, that, that will take all the way. So, uh, so that's what, that's what I have. Um, that's the most recent, you know, series that, that I had actually set up with, um, with the buyer. And then, um, I'm uh, currently writing a feature film for uh, two producers, and that is a hip hop Romeo and Juliet story based here in Los Angeles. Music, you know, music absolutely is always, always, always a very strong, uh, you know, p uh, a component, whether it's a storytelling vehicle or, or just inspires, um, just inspires narrative. It's just, it's just, it's just an important piece of whatever I do. And, uh, and then, you know, going back to my origin story, um, because my, my personal story became so much, uh, a, a narrative, um, and a journey of assimilation, uh, thematically, I write underdog stories, fish out of water stories. Um, you know, the, uh, just, you know, the, just, just, just saving the day, you know, saving the day, just being, just being, uh, uh, you know, the, the, I guess the one that was uh, canceled out, but ends up, you know, saving the day. So, so, so much, so much of those themes um, actually appear in my narratives, regardless of, regardless of genre, because I write 
um, I write action, you know, thriller, crime, sci-fi, magical realism, uh, you know, some fantasy. Um, so very much like genre, you know, genre, the genre genres, you know, some occasional horror. Um, but, uh, and, and, and also, you know, uh, like quirky, uh, you know, dark humor as well. But, uh, but regardless of the genre, thematically, I'm always writing these fish out of water and underdog, underdog stories. So, um, so that's what I'm working on the feature side. And then I'm also consulting, I'm consulting for a film production company, historically film production company who now has leaned into television. So I am helping them uh, develop and build out their television slate uh, and uh, to, you know, to, to, you know, and bring, to bring that to the marketplace to sell those shows. And then I'm also uh, consulting for another production company on a, on a television series that I've been involved with, uh, with some time and really, you know, further developing that show and getting that ready to take to the marketplace as well. And then I recently directed a proof of concept short for a one hour television series that I created called Confessions. And I'm currently in post uh, for that, uh, for that particular short um and it's a standalone short so definitely i definitely plan on you know fingers crossed having a festival run with that particular short um but i will be leveraging that short to uh sell the television series as well as uh potentially sell the uh you know the the, the feature film um and uh and and just you know leverage that piece for you know quite quite a bit of uh as, as much as as much as i possibly can so those are some of the things that I'm up to, um, and that's that's my origin story. Whoa! Oh <laughs> my gosh! Your life is the opposite of boring. You have got <laughs> so many things. Amazing! Wow, this is really encouraging. You definitely are braving your own way in this industry, and it's inspiring because we're right along trying to hold on to those coattails with you. So yeah, we, are. <laughs> we have so many questions uh, and so lim limited limited time, but okay, so. How did the writer's room 5050 come to be? Thank you. Yes, thank you for that. So, um, you know, as a woman, as a Latina, you know, work, working in the entertainment industry, and then also, um, also in tech, I, you know, I bridged tw uh, tech quite a bit because of my, uh, you know, my graphic design, which then led into interactive and video games. So there, there was like, uh, and then, and then once I started working in digital as well, digital entertainment. Most of the time, I was the only woman in the room, and certainly the only woman of 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 color. So I really realized, um, well, first of all, how, how how fortunate I was to be in that position, but also that I needed to represent, and uh, and and really uh, wherever I wherever I could um, to you know to to open doors and bring others along with me. And then once I actually once I started working in the entertainment industry as a storyteller i also realized uh like the same thing the same thing happened uh you know again where i was uh, either the only woman the only woman of color in the room um and uh and and that's also when i came face to face with the statistics of um you know how few you know people of color actually are working um and 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 thriving so I uh, I became an activist, um, you know, really became an activist uh, on that on that front for um, inclusion and equity, and uh, I got very involved um, in in my guilds um, on this front. So I'm a, I'm a member of the uh, the WGA, the Writers Guild of America West, and I'm currently the uh, the co-chair of the Latinx Writers Committee. Very involved in creating events and uh, opportunities uh, for Latinx writers for. I mean, my, you know, my, my, uh, my personal intention is always to put, uh, you know, a Latinx writer as well as a, as, 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 as an underrepresented storyteller in front of a buyer, a hirer and a creator, um, where they can foster meaningful relationships and, uh, and, 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 and opportunities. So I, I just really became very involved in the, uh, the inclusion, inclusion and equity effort, and, uh, and have mentored, uh, you know, for, for, for many years and, uh, and, and have even taught. Um, and, you know, then I had friends just really badgering me saying, Hey, you know, Yvette, you have to, you, you, you really have to take your mentorship and your teaching and, 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 and put it into more of a formal, um, structure because it's, you know, just really valuable because I, I was always one with my mentorship and even my, my teaching 
was to teach and present uh, just like firsthand information, what is happening right now, what you need to know at this moment to help you compete in the marketplace. And um, so after a lot of badgering from friends, I actually, uh, I created two different labs. One was pitching the television series lab, a six week lab. And then the second one was writing a television pilot, which is a 10 week lab. So I had committed to teaching these in the evening um, two, sum two, two years ago, two summers ago. And, uh, and then I was doing my thing during the day, my writing, my directing, my producing, the hustle. And in the evenings, um, you know, just two, two, two evenings out of the week, I was, you know, teaching these labs. But what happened was that three weeks in, while I was teaching these labs, I started hearing from the industry at large, the studios, producers, executives, who literally reached out to me asking me to refer my alumni for different opportunities that they had. So I was blown away by, uh, you know, by, by this. And I just really realized that what I was doing was actually so much bigger than me and I needed to find a way to keep it going. So, uh, so I did, you know, I did, I did just that. And then, um, I ended up, I ended up structuring a foundation and it's called the writer's room 50, 50. And, uh, so now we actually offer 12 different labs um we're gonna add, be adding a, a few more in fact but 12 different labs Amazing. we uh this year we, we we had our first fellowship the bipoc writers fellowship adapting the book to the screen and we partnered with a book publisher who literally supplied the books so this was uh this was an adaptation an adaptation um fellowship so and we, we found nine incredible bipoc writers who adapted, uh, you know, these books into either a, a, a feature film or a television series, a pilot, and uh, and now um, we are in the process of selling those scripts and selling those projects. So it's been just incredibly powerful, and um, it just happened organically. You know, Tony, I'm, I'm going to be honest; it happened organically, and. So, you know, it's something else, you know, in, 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 in the mix, uh, that, uh, that, that I do, but it's been incredibly satisfying the talent, the talent in, uh, you know, just the talent is incredible. Um, and it's just really been an honor and, 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 uh, just any, any, anything that I've been able to do, uh, you know, to, to support, uh, that talent has just, it's, it's been a blessing. Um, so that's, that's the writer's room 50, 50. Right on. Who who would you say the labs would benefit for creatives listening? What what would you get out of joining the labs? Who are they for? They are for writers, directors, producers, actors, uh, storytellers. They are for storytellers. Yeah, and and and, and by the way, it's like all different levels as well. Um, you know, it, okay. you you aren't you aren't. It's not even just uh, someone necessarily who is starting out. I mean, we have story, we have storytellers of all, at all levels, but you know, they, they, they've either like either hit up a, uh, like a, a plateau, they've plateaued somewhere, um, or they're looking to pivot. You know, you, you might have an actor who's actually really looking now to, you know, to write and produce, mm -hmm. um, or direct, um, you know, uh, you know, so, so, so there, there are those that have either, you know, hit a plateau, those that are looking to pivot, those that actually just want to make the commitment to writing up, you know, writing, a, writing that pitch, um, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, that pitch that's really going to get them attention, um, or writing that, writing that pilot that that's really going to pop, um, or just even being, you know, just being in a place that's holding you accountable, um, there are those that just want to learn the, uh, the, the, like the skills, necessary skills for a writer's room. So yeah. people come for different reasons and they are all, you know, different at all different levels. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, I mean, so there's, there's, again, there's just incredible talent. There's just incredible talent that comes, you know, comes to attend, attends the lab labs and they become part of our, you know, alumni. Yvette, we're thoroughly impressed by all the things you have going on. I'm looking on your website right now. If you're watching this live or on the replay, there's a free lab this Saturday, October 23rd, 2021. And you can go to writersroom5050.com slash labs and then see the plethora, whoa, of mm -hmm. other opportunities, you know, about directing and pitching and finishing a final draft and doing short films. We have a lot of people who are trying to do a short film. So this is invaluable brave makers go to writers writers uh, sorry writers 
room 5050.com and check it out. So Yvette, okay, so I found you because I have been in this TV world myself and I've done a few pitches and uh, I'm still learning the ropes and I've done, I got to pitch on a couple pilots that were putting together writer's room this summer and have an animated show that I got to pitch to Peacock and, and I'm still learning and it's such a, a joy, but I want to get better. Uh, both Christine and I want to learn some of your secrets, but we want people to pay for them. So whatever you want to share, what are some sure. things that people are going to get out of your book that you wrote, how to become a badass pitcher? Yeah. Um, well, again, I mean, you know, this particular, this particular book, this guide, um, it, uh, it really, it dives into, it takes a deep dive into the structure. It takes a deep dive into the structure of writing the pitch because it all begins with the words on the page of that pitch. So you're going to learn the different elements, all the different uh, elements that are necessary to write a badass pitch, uh, you know, what, what they mean, and then also how to write this pitch because, as I mentioned earlier, when you are pitching a, a series, that is a verbal, that is a verbal presentation where literally you are telling the story of your story to a buyer or anyone that can add value if you're building up your team as well. You know, you, you, you could certainly pitch to producers, you know, et cetera, who might want to come on your team. But when you're pitching to sell, uh, you know, you're selling to some kind of buyer, you know, some, you know, some, some network. And usually there's, there's a development executives or even presidents. If uh, you know, depending depending on the, uh, how much clout you have, or or the clout of your team can get those decision makers in the room, right? The goal is always to get those decision makers, mm -hmm. you know, in in the room as much as possible. But uh, but most of the time, you're you know, you're pitching to development executives, and um, so there is there there literally there really is a way of doing it. And uh, so as you're telling the story of your story, you're you're telling that story. As if, as if it's a conversation with a buyer. So you have to write it in that way, but there are nece there's necessary information that must be in, in the pitch so that the buyer, first of all, they know they, they, they have a very clear idea of what your vision of the show is and that you know your show inside out and also that your series has legs, meaning that you know, it's not certainly you're not selling a pilot, you're selling a series so that uh, they, you know, in the listening and, and they may ask questions along the way. But typically when you when you are pitching, uh, they allow you you know, pretty much to, you know, to pitch, uh, you know, finish, allow allow you to, to present your full presentation. And then there's the, a, a Q&A period afterwards. But don't get me wrong. Occasionally there are questions that come up in between. Um, but uh but with they, one of the things that they're listening for, and they're listening for many things, but one of the things that they're listening for is that your series has legs, meaning that there are seasons of episodes. So there's a tremendous amount of development work that you have to do before you can even write your pitch. But in my guide, these elements that are necessary for you to write this pitch, leaning into those elements is also going to help you develop the show so that then you could actually write the pitch that then eventually you'll present verbally. So um, it's definitely an art form. Um, it's definitely an art form. And then of course you want to present it naturally and with passion and you want to have eye contact. You want to make a real human connection because half of half of a sale is you, the other half is the project. And uh, so, so, so all of that, you know, you're, you're, you're selling yourself and you're selling your project always when uh when 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 you are pitching and in fact whenever you're meeting with someone you know they have to like you just as much as they like your project because you know these uh when you're working with people um this can go on for years right <laughs> and and hopefully a successful show will go on for years so there definitely has to be chemistry right there has to be chemistry there and the more that you can show who you are in your pitch uh, and wrapping your personal connection to this project to the idea of your show, that's also a, a, a really big part of, uh, of, of, of the sale as well. So in the guidebook, you know, I basically dive into all of these necessary, necess necessary elements and, uh, you know, to help you write, write that winning pitch. 
This is super exciting. So I'm currently working on a pitch and I didn't know that I needed to have a script for the pitch. I had <laughs> like a loose outline of what I wanted to share and I didn't think of it as a conversation. So when you say that it needs to be presented as a conversation, can you give me an example of what that would look like? Sure, sure, absolutely. Well, just you know, just the way that you and I are 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 speaking right now, and we're having a uh -huh. conversation. You would you would present your series that way. So, for example, um, you know, at the beginning of 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 any pitch, there's always some you know some small talk. But but don't get me wrong, that small talk, uh, you want to make sure that that you are um, really really fostering value out of all of that. You know, whatever you're sharing there that somehow it's tied to your 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 series so that's just that is conversation that's not even scripted you're in the moment and you would have mm -hmm. done your research to know who you're meeting with mm -hmm. uh you know what, what what their background is you know perhaps uh where they went to school etc you know something something personal that you can also connect with and 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 mention um where it makes sense in the conversation but you want to share something personal about yourself up front even before you dive into the pitch um that is connected to the project so you're already you're already like planting the seeds and then once you actually dive into the the pitch itself uh you could use language along the lines of you know i'm 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 so uh i'm so excited to you know to to to, to be here to tell you about my series you know blank so fill in the blank that the, the title um and this particular series it's based on something that happened to me right and then you would go into your personal connection that you have to the series, whether it was a job that you held, it was emotional uh, that you yourself have experienced. Um, and by the way, regardless of genre, regardless of time period, regardless of this is fiction or not, you want to identify uh, an aspect of your story, of, of your show, that you yourself have have had some kind of personal experience with um the more that you wrap yourself into your show the more that you yourself can shine and you're answering three different questions um why me right you're answering the why me question you're also answering the why now why you're telling this story now which which is the relevancy and uh, and your personal connection certainly can speak to that, but the relevancy, and then ultimately, ultimately, when you um, there's a you know there's definitely a point in in the pitch where you're going to be sharing the pilot story, and that the teaser, the opening, that inciting incident of the pilot story also answers the you know um, why this story, this particular story, is being told mm -hmm. now. So. Um, so you are telling the story of your story as if it's a conversation every step along the way with every element and the connective tissue is conversational as opposed to bits of information and uh because your 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 pitch itself it also has a narrative arc there's a beginning a middle and an end to your overall pitch it it, it within itself it's a story so uh it's a continuous narrative that you're telling as a conversation, as if you were telling your best friend this amazing project that you're working on. So this is priceless. <laughs> and that is priceless because it takes the it really takes a lot of the stress out of it. If I feel like I'm just coming into a room, I've done my homework, I know who I'm pitching to, and we're just gonna have a conversation. I'm gonna share a really wild dream I have to bring a story to life. And they might love it, they might not, but it just, it feels a lot more doable the way that you set this up. Yeah. I love your advice about, it seems like for you, when you enter the room to pitch, every word you say is intentional. Yes. Even when it's conversational, even when it's just like the art of bantering, everything that comes out of your mouth, the intention behind it is to sell your story, to convince them that this is why they should buy your story. And I love that. I love the focus of that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you definitely need to be extremely focused and uh, and 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 be intentional. Um, there's no there's mm -hmm. no question about it. And you are basically presenting the value and your vision. I mean, when you're pitching, you're selling vision. You're selling mm -hmm. you're selling your vision um, because it isn't tangible yet. 
you're selling your vision of what this series is and what it could be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, with television, it's long form storytelling. So it's going to continue, right? Um, it will go on and on and on and on. I mean, of course, there are also limited series that, uh, you know, it's just one season. But at the same time, um, it will go on, of course, just for, you know, for four seasons. And you're selling the vision of that with all of your passion and, uh, you know, and, and, and everything that you know about, about, about the, the series. Um, and, uh, you know, and you're just, you're telling it in a manner that you're making it really difficult for them to say no. You're giving them every single reason in the world to say yes to your show. I can't wait to devour this book. Can you share with us again, where can listeners and viewers get their hands on your book? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, well, you can go to, you can go to uh, the Writer's Room 5050 website, which mm -hmm. is uh, writersroom5050.com, as, as you have there on screen. And, uh, and in the labs section, um, in the lab section, you will find the book listed there and, uh, and you can, and you can sign up to, to order the book and, uh, and then we'll follow up from, from, from there. So that's definitely a great way, a great way to get it. You can also, uh, you know, DM me, um, on all of my socials for the most part, I am, you know, at the Yvette Vargas, um, on, uh, IG and, uh, and, and Twitter, so, uh, you know, you can also, you can also reach out to me there and, uh, and I'll follow up. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. I can see it on screen. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, have, we'll have all of this in the notes as well. If you're listening on the podcast for the audio replay, this is Christina's like, this is invaluable, but it only costs $10. Yes. $10 <laughs> is what it costs you. And you get this plethora of invaluable information yeah. in, I'm, I'm so inspired. I'm sitting here going, okay, I need to, you know, get going. Uh, if you are wanting to be in this industry, pitching is so much of what you need to learn how to do. It is a relational business. We talk about this all the time. Uh, as writers, we do, you know, spend a lot of time writing or alone, but we also have to get really good at connecting. If we want to sell those ideas that we're writing on the page, learning to talk to people at all different levels in the system, the studio system, as well as the independent producers that we're uh, trying to make these relationships with this is really really crucial so of that oh my gosh thank you so much for this yeah. time and all of the work that you're doing we're going to keep following you and uh hopefully we can have you back again when you've got i'm looking at your imd by the way too and seeing all the things that you've done and have written and you were part of the lord of the rings video game how fun is that doing some multimedia stuff so it sounds like you have had a very diverse history and uh, i think all of us who are trying to you know get to that next level can find you know something in what you shared with us today to help us brave our way forward because that's what we're about what's one thing if you're listening or watching what's one thing you can take away from today to be able to move forward and that might be taking a lab with the writers room 50 50 or following a vet uh, she sends a lot of inspiration on her social media which is cool we love that and then just reading her book i'm excited to read it and uh do some follow-up maybe we'll do a brave maker partnership uh, lab someday with writers room 50 50 i could see it i could see it i would love that that would be yeah that that would be incredible um yes so let's 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 make that happen let's make that happen for your for your audience and uh yes you know and then also just you know on the pitching front we you know we have we have our one of our flagship labs um you know uh writing the well it's actually pitching the television series pitching the television series it's a six week lab, actually a lab just ended last night. And in those six weeks, you are going to write the pitch of your script. You you are going to practice that pitch every single week and receive feedback. You are going to design your pitch deck that will accompany again, your verbal pitch. And all that particular lab ends in you pitching your series to a, de a development executive or a producer. And last night, uh, you know, one of those labs ended with pitch night, um, and there were uh, five five writers actually that ended up pitching to a producer, and it was just phenomenal. And to see that, yeah, to see that, to see the the growth and the evolution, and and to establish those relationships. I mean, we've had we've had so much success, uh, you know, with, with I mean, with all of our labs, um, but specifically just with the the pitching because you know, again. Um, the, you know, the storyteller is, uh, is pitching to either development executive or producer, literally 10 projects, uh, have moved forward with development executives and producers who have heard those pitches. So, 
yeah, it's uh, a, a, just a lot of incredible, wonderful things have, have come out of all the labs. We will share this on our social media too. And those of you who have been a part of our Brave Maker Screenwriters Workshop will share this in that private group too. This is so good. Thank you of that. We're not done with you yet. We're going to end our show with our Brave Faves. Brave Faves. TV shows, films, books, songs, technology, clothing, podcast, food, and more. These are a few of our favorite people, places, and things. Brave Faves. All right, Christina, take us out. What you got? Uh, my brave fave for the week is Variety Studios Actors on Actors. I, I love this show. It's such a laid back, conversational style show between actors. This was the latest episode that I watched. Uh, it's not in order. I just jump in wherever I feel like, oh, I want to hear their conversation. Brad and Adam, they're <laughs> fantastic. I love the conversation that they had about acting and being on set and they're just talking about the things that Tony and I talk about, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, learning your lines, like the most simplest of things that you forget, like, well, Brad and Adam had to learn their lines, like things like that. So it's a really cool show for actors and filmmakers. Real, I love the format of it. And yeah, that's my brave fave for the week and Uncut Gems. Tony actually went over that in our screenwriting class. So that was really cool to get to hear them talk about that scene that we were breaking down. So from the inside, what was it like for Adam shooting that scene? So the show is so cool. Uh, yeah, that's my brave fave. And I'll shoot it over to you, Tony. I just finished this new show. It's not new, but it finished last week uh, on Hulu called Only Murders in the Building with Selena Gomez and Martin Short and Steve Martin. Oh my gosh. I have just been eating up murder mystery shows lately. And this one was just so fun. Murder mystery shows can be all different sorts of, you know, styles and dark and gritty. And, but this one had like so much comedy and it was so good and smart and fun. So if you like murder mysteries, you definitely got to check this out. And who would have ever thought, you know, a 20, something you know latina with some 70 year old white guys would be would work <laughs> it was great i loved it it was super fun highly recommend hulu's only murders in the building avette what you got amazing amazing well and by the way i love i love both of those uh you know both of those brave faves uh yeah and and in fact that particular episode with brad and Adam, I you know watched when it first actually premiered. Um, I think it was like last year or so. But it's, but it's just such an amazing series. It's such an amazing you know series that Variety put together. So highly recommend uh, as as well. Um, and yeah, I mean such a great show, Tony. Such a great show. Sorry. Unexpected, unexpected surprise, right? Um, yep. Unexpected surprise. And yeah, so here 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 you have my favorite. My favorite of the week, uh, Bitcoin, hard money you can't F with. <laughs> <laughs> Why Bitcoin will become the next global reserve currency. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is just a phenomenal audio book, by the way. I, I, I want to recommend, um, you know, I listened to the audio book this week and instantly, instantly fell in love from the opening. This if you know nothing about Bitcoin, I highly I, I really believe that you that you will just love and be blown away by this by this audiobook it is so engaging inspiring of course uh enlightening and educational regardless of how much you know about bitcoin there is more to learn in this particular book so i highly 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 recommend it especially the audiobook because it's it's done really really well it's a it's a female uh female um a woman with a british uh beautiful british accent or just british voice and it's just it's just so well done so that is my that is my brave fave for the week and uh yeah absolutely you know bitcoin hard money you can't f with right and um and i just also want to thank you for you know uh, pulling up my uh, article on forbes uh that was something that you know dropped recently which was you know of course a tremendous honor and uh, thank you thank you thank you yeah they did a, such a beautiful piece uh you know myself and the writers from 50 50 i'm just uh, so you know so grateful uh and uh but thank you for thank you for bringing that up mm -hmm. yeah we want to encourage you to go and follow 
uh, of that on her Instagram, uh, which is the Yvette Vargas. Uh, we'll put that all in the show notes. And you're, if you're watching live or on the replay, you'll see it below. We're so glad you were with us, Yvette. Please don't go away. We'd love to grab a picture with you before we end. Absolutely. But uh, you know, if you've watched the show before, that we are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. We are dedicated to justice, diversity, and inclusion through the art of film. And so we love your support. Everything that you give, whether it's $5 or $500, through our website at bravemaker.com slash donate. Uh, helps us support the show and whether it's gear or podcasts or film equipment or some of the things that we're doing coming up uh, we would highly recommend and encourage you finding a way to partner with us so we can keep doing this stuff and maybe you just want to make sure you don't miss a screenwriting workshop or one of our seasonal events coming up that Christina is going to talk to you about sign up at our website email list at bravemaker.com slash buzz and Christina is going to tell you what's coming up next week Yes, come back next Wednesday at 4 p.m. our regular time. We are going to be having our Brave Maker costume party, fall fundraiser pre-show. The party is next Friday. <laughs> We're going to have a pre-party show to talk about some of the activities we got going on, including live performance by Robin Jackson, a.k.a. Baby Sis. You don't want to miss it. It's going to be super cool. And the costumes are going to be wild. I know me and Jessica are planning something kind of, coordinated that's going to be nice and spooky so yeah definitely come out and join us next friday if you're in the redwood city area we have prizes and stuff for the best film related costume so come out i'm really stoked on this and we think we think this might become an annual event the friday before yes. halloween forevermore the brave maker exists we're going to do something fun like this we've been planning this for quite some time so coming out and I'll finally I wanted to, to also say we are, because uh, Yvette mentioned this earlier, she was a part of the Sundance Labs. We are going to be going to Sundance. We are taking a trip. Right now we have about eight spots left for a condo that we are renting in Park City, Utah. If this is something that you are interested to do, please let me know. We're actually having some informational meetings via Zoom. You can go to our website at bravemaker.com slash events and sign up to learn more. Uh, there are limited seats. It's kind of a pricey thing because it's in the snow of Park City. You gotta fly yourself there, buy tickets and all that kind of stuff, but we've got a condo and we're really excited. We have one person, two people I think who are officially signed up already. So we only have eight spots left. If you would like to go, go to bravemaker.com slash events. All right, well, that's our show. Thank you so much, Yvette, for hanging out with us. It was a pleasure. I know we're going to connect again because you got the same vibe we got going on and we want to we want to keep doing this, this great work. And we're glad to partner with you and others who do it. Amazing. Well, thank you again for having me. It's been a complete honor and a delight. And, uh, you know, can't wait to see Christina. Can't wait to see your comic book. And, uh, and of course, Tony, you. you know, your, your, your screenplays, um, you know, just keep keep writing, keep, you know, keep telling our, we have to keep telling our stories, just keep telling our stories. Right on. And uh, and it all comes together, you know. It really, and, yeah. and when, when the timing is right, it really it all comes together. We'll hang out for a picture. We'll do a picture with you at the end, if you would. We'll end uh, the show today. Thanks, everybody. Brave stories change the world. And you are the story. Bye, everybody. <laughs>